Yo! In this video, I'm going to be teaching you three easy card tricks that you can learn in five minutes. Last time I made one of these videos, I said if you can get it to two and a half thousand likes, I'll make another one. And you guys did it in like two days. So here it is, three easy card tricks that you can learn in just five minutes, okay? The best thing about this whole thing is it uses a regular pack of playing cards. There are no extras, no gimmicks, nothing like that. And the sleight of hand is pretty much zero. So this will be super easy for you. Now, before we dive into the tricks, make sure that you smash like if you haven't already and subscribe, yeah? Also, the notification bell, okay? I can't stress this enough. It's the most important one. You gotta turn that thing on, activate the power of the bell. And if you guys like these videos, make sure that you get this video to three and a half thousand likes, and I'll make another one. I have to increase the like goal because you guys are smashing it too quickly, man. Now, without any further ado, let's take a look at trick number one. All right, so first I'm gonna perform the trick for you and then I'm gonna teach you how it's done. Starting off with trick number one. If you were here, you could pick any card you want. Let's say you went with this one right here. I promise I won't look, okay? Look at this, remember the card. All right, don't forget it. I'm gonna place it right there on the table. And now I'm gonna take these cards, I'm gonna split them up into a few piles like this, yeah? Three piles. Now they're gonna be shuffled face up into face down, yeah? I take the piles like this. Boom, look at that. You can actually see these are really being shuffled face up into face down, creating chaos. Now we can do it this way here. We shuffle it again, face up into face down once again. And now we've got a legitimate mess of cards. It's gonna be very hard to locate your card. Wait a second, whoops, <laughs> your card's still there. All right, well I guess this becomes a different trick then. I'll tell you what that card is. All I have to do is wave and snap and the information will reveal itself to me. When I drop the deck like this, every card is now facing the exact same direction. Every single card except for the spades. Check it out, if we spread through here, you can see the ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, jack, queen, king of spades, which means that your card has to be the nine of spades. Boom, baby, that's sick. Now the beautiful thing about this trick is that it's a legitimate fool or doula, you know what I'm saying? I've done this for magicians and it's like, it's fooled magicians, just saying. All right, now there is a small setup for this trick if you haven't figured it out already, and that's that you're gonna wanna separate these cards, the ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all, all of the same suit. Doesn't have to be spades, but it does have to be the same suit. And now another thing that I recommend is that with the king, um, the one that's gonna be on the bottom of that stack that you're gonna put here, you just wanna put a small bend in the corner like this, yeah? And that way when it's sitting on top of the deck, you can see there's like a natural gap there. So you'll know where to pick up the cards basically. And now what you're gonna do is when you offer your spectator to pick a card, you're just gonna spread those top 13 cards, all of the same suit, yeah? And offer them one. Whatever they pick, it doesn't really matter. It is a free choice. And from here, now because you've got this card here that's got a natural break from the little bend you put in the corner, you're just gonna pick all those cards up in one chunk. That's one cut, two cuts, three cuts. Now you just need to remember where all your spades are, okay? This pile here, that's all the spades. Now from here, you're gonna take the cards, you're gonna flip over the pile that is not all spades, it looks like a mixed up pile, and then you do a little spread like this so that you can show all the cards. A thing that's fun to do after that, you riffle shuffle the cards face up into face down, and I like to kind of spread them down like this so you can actually see that they're being mixed together, face up into face down. This makes the illusion feel so much more complicated than it is, yeah? Now, at this stage here, all of your spades are face down, okay? And so you don't wanna mix these in there. You want the spades to be the only ones that are face down. So what I recommend here is that you take this pile, you flip this one face up, and now when you shuffle it together, the only cards that will be face down are the spades. But you get this nice moment where you get to say, I've now mixed the deck, and you can actually see they are face up, face down, face up, you know, it's a mess of cards. And the whole time, the whole premise for this trick is that you're pretending that you forgot to put this card back in the deck. So you say things like, now that they're all mixed like this, it's gonna be really hard to find your card. And at that point, sometimes your spectator's gonna be like, ah, oh, dude, I'm, I'm still holding my card. You go, oh, 
Okay, well, let's do something different then. And now you get to pretend you're a card sharp because the trick's already over. So you can like wave and snap or do whatever you want. And then when you spread the cards out, you want to make sure that all the kings or all the spades are rather a face up so that when you spread through, you can show them all like this. And then you get this dramatic moment where you get to say, not only did I locate all the cards, I shuffled the deck so that they're all in order. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's no seven there. Eight, nine, ten, Jack, Queen, King. So you can tell them that their card is the seven of spades. And it's a powerful effect. I guarantee you it's going to blow some mind holes. Woo! Starting out strong with that trick number one, eh? And now we're going to do trick two. And this one... It's a quickie, but it's a good one. I think you're gonna use this one like all the time. I guarantee you after this video, you'll probably try and show someone like straight away. It's just, it's good. All right, for this trick here, we're gonna use two cards. We've got a black six and a black nine. And these cards, we're gonna put them in the middle wherever you say stop, okay? It doesn't matter where, we'll put them exactly wherever you say stop. And you can see them both going in into two different spots in the deck, okay? All the way into the middle. And now we close that up as fair as fair can be. Now, in a second, I'm going to rip those two cards directly out from the center of the deck using incredibly fast sleight of hand. But I don't want you to think I'm cheating, so check it out. We'll give it a countdown. One, two, three. And just like that, I've managed to rip out the black six and the black nine in an instant. Crazy. <laughs> That one's a quickie, baby, a hell quick trick. And it's nice because this trick uses something known as a pseudo double, okay, a pseudo double. And let me just show you what I mean. All right, so what you're gonna use for this trick is the nine of clubs and the six of spades, and then the six of clubs and the nine of spades. Now you have to use a six and a nine, and they have to be opposite suits, okay? This, this will make sense in a minute, but you never actually say to your spectator which suits they are. This is what a uh, like misrepresentation of information will look like. People's brains will fill in the gaps, okay? If you just say I have a black six and a black nine, that's all they're gonna remember. And they kind of end up tricking themselves. Like they inadvertently fool themselves and it's great. So first of all, you're gonna start off with a one of each on the top and the bottom, okay? Like this. And then you just have these two here on the top as well. So you should have something looking like this, okay? Now, in a second, when you go to your spectator, you say, all right, I want to show you a trick using a black nine and a black six. And just kind of like show it, but like don't sit there and just hold it at them like this. You want to like casually flash them, you know, a black nine and a black six, and you just kind of hold them pretty loosely. And then what you can do is you place those on the table like this, and you spread the cards out if you want to, or you can do it in your hands where you spread them like this. It doesn't matter how you do it, but if you then take the cards and you go, check it out, black six and a black nine, we're gonna put one over here and one over here or wherever your spectator wants to put them. They go all the way in and then you close up the deck like this, nice and fair. Now the next part is sort of sleight of hand-ish, but not really, like there's actually no sleight of hand. You just explain to them that you're gonna be able to use sleight of hand to very quickly remove the two cards from the center of the deck right before their eyes and it happens in an instant. And I like to do a countdown as I do it as fairly as possible. I go one, two, three. And now what's happening is I'm holding the deck like this, yeah? And if I sort of flick like this, what's gonna happen is the inertia, the inertia will pull the cards from the bottom and from the top, okay? So let me show you what I mean. So you can see we've got the nine and the six on the top and the bottom still. And when I flick like this, okay, the natural padding and the natural tackiness of your hands will retain those two cards and you kind of just flick the rest of the deck out. Now you can flick it directly to the table like that and have them sort of fall under the table. Or what I think looks better is if you have this hand ready and you kind of like throw the deck into that hand and it looks so much more impressive. Like this is a really impressive moment. And then you get to be like, check it out. One, two, the black six and the black nine. And then just, you know, it's freaking awesome. It's a really good trick. The funny thing about that trick is that's one of the first tricks I ever learned and I still occasionally use it today. Like I still will whip out the old six and nine trick. The other beautiful thing is if you hold the deck like this to your spectator, you can throw it across like that. So you get this nice framing of your face when you do the trick and you can be like, ooh, put the deck down and be like, check it out, black nine, black six. And you get this really nice framing where everything's like up at chest height rather than them looking down at your crotch. You know what I mean? You dirty little, you sick little monkey. Ugh. All right, we're coming up to the last portion of the video. I'm talking the final trick. And if you haven't done it yet, notification bell. 
Now just quickly, I'd like to mention that I enjoy teaching these simple tricks because I get the feeling that there are like fathers or parents out there that just want to show their kids some like easy magic that can just, you know, just have a nice moment with them. And, and these tricks are really great for creating just nice organic moments between you and a friend or a family or a pretty girl. Hmm? Now trick number three, okay? This one's a pretty good one. All right, for this trick here, you can give your spectator the deck. They can shuffle until their heart's content. Seriously, they can do all the shuffles. They can do the fancy ones like this. They can do a fancy cutting motion like this. Six years without a girlfriend will get you these sorts of skills. You know what I'm saying? You can just do normal cuts. You can even do one of these sloppy shuffles. The important thing is, is that the deck is genuinely shuffled. Now, the trick here is that after they hand the deck back to you, you just want to reiterate to them. Uh, check this out. This deck is completely mixed up, yeah? And and what I'm going to do is let you cut a portion of cards. Let's say you cut here. And now the fourth card from the top here will tell me what the fourth card over here is. So in this case here, the fourth card, yep, got it. So this one here is the three of spades. One, two, three, four, the three of spades. How cool is that, man? Of course, we can do that again. I'll take it here. I'll give it a little mix just like this. And now you can cut the cards wherever you want. And if we go fourth card on this side here, it'll tell me what the fourth card over here is. So we got one, two, three, four. Yeah, perfect, got it. This is the three of clubs. Check it out, one, two, three, four, the three of clubs. Man, this is crazy, how do I do this? I'm about to tell you, but don't worry. Let me just close all this up again and we'll go for round number three. This time here, we're gonna shuffle it again like this. Mixed, 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 mixed. We cut it right here and now, it doesn't actually matter. I can already tell you. I don't even need to look at the card here. I can tell you what the fourth card of this one is with just the feeling. Queen of Diamonds. Check it out. One, two, three. The Queen of Diamonds. All right, so to do this trick is super easy. Barely an inconvenience. <laughs> I love that show. Now, what you're gonna do is you can give your deck to the spectator and they really can shuffle this up as much as they want in any way that they want. They can shuffle it, they can do anything they want to it. And when they hand the deck back to you, you're just gonna say to them uh, that this really is just a mixed up deck of cards, yeah? Now when I do that spread, okay, when I spread through the cards like this, I actually look at the top four cards and I'm looking at the card in the fourth position here, yeah? And that means that now I know that the fourth position card from the top is the Queen of Diamonds. So now when they cut the deck, I say, I'm going to look at the fourth card from here and it's gonna tell me what the fourth card over here is. And really all that's happening is I'm just remembering that the Queen of Diamonds is here and I, now I'm gonna remember this card as well, right? So in this case, the Jack of Diamonds. So I look at it and I go, ah, yes, this tells me that your card is the Queen of Diamonds. I count one, two, three, and the fourth card is the Queen of Diamonds. Now I put this back on top and you can leave these cards out for people if you want, it doesn't really matter. And now what I do is I do another shuffle but I make sure not to move the top four cards, yeah? So in this case here, I'm gonna put the Jack of Diamonds face up so that you can see. What I do is I cut the deck to do a riffle shuffle and I just stop when there's a block at the top there. I do, I like doing little things like this to really make convinces. And then from here, you can see it's still there in the same position. So when we cut the cards again, I can say, look, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, fourth from the top, and it tells me, so now I've looked at this one here, that's the four of spades, and then I get to do the whole like, yeah, one, two, three, the jack of diamonds. And then for the last one, I like to mix it up again. So I do one more shuffle, right? Just one more shuffle, keeping it in, in order. I get them to cut the deck again. And then I go, this time I'm not gonna look, I'm just gonna get a feeling for it. So this is like upping the stakes, as it were, yeah? So I'm upping the ante, and I'm able to tell them that that is the four of spades. One, two, three, and yes, it's the four of spades. And the beautiful thing is, the trick is completely self-working. You don't even need to add the shuffles in. You can just do the trick without shuffling at all. I just think giving it a little mix and retaining the top four cards so that you don't lose track of the one you're remembering makes the trick look a lot more like crazy, you know what I mean? A lot more convincing, a lot more fooling. But you can really convince people that somehow the deck is telling you what the other card is. And then at the very end, you can feel it, you know what I mean? And it's a powerful trick. And I've done this to friends. Actually, I use it often on just people and it always gets a good reaction. People are constantly shocked by the fact that it works. <laughs> anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Three easy tricks you can learn in just 
five minutes. And now, uh, yeah, three and a half thousand likes, I'll make another one. Until then, that was day number 114 of the 365 Days of Magic Challenge. And I'll see you tomorrow for day 115. Call me Bucky, lucky that I'm innocent. Uh, if I didn't have no morals, I'd be menacing. Uh.